Okay, this video is going to be a rundown of how I take my astrophotography pictures from like the night before to a relatively fast processing using PixInsight and Lightroom to make them shareable on Facebook and so you can show your family and friends and they turn out pretty well. This is not the most advanced way to process your pictures, but it works. And I think you'll be happy with the the end result. Now I'm going to do this from start to finish, so you can follow along. First thing I'm going to do is going to go to all processes, and I'm going to hit blink. The blink allows you to load images and review each one to uh, see if there's any problems. And I left some in here that I know are no good. This is my bubble from one night run. Uh, I'm going to select all those, open them, and it's going to load them into Blink. It takes a few seconds. Okay, so there's the uh, under, not debayered, you can see the pixels in there, black and white fit image. Um, at this point that's kind of rough looking, but it gets better. So you can step through these one at a time. But I like to hit play animation. You can adjust the time. But I hit play animation. There's a meridian flip right there. That's not a problem. But watch this star right here. See how it messed up there? So I'm going to go zoom in on here. Move this over a little bit. OK. Now I'm going to step through. And I happen to know approximately where there's a couple bad images in there I can move. Okay. So that image is bad. So I'm going to delete that image. It's already highlighted with the, the orange or red. I'm colorblind. <laughs> right there. So I want to close the selected image. This is right next to it. That closes all the images and really screws you up. <laughs> so hit the close selected image. And it got rid of it. It's back to image 37. Let's go to the next one. Another bad image. Close it. Delete 39. Goes back to 37. Step it again. Image 40 is no good. Delete image 40. Goes back to 37. Step it forward. That one's no good. Delete that one. Goes back to 37. 42, no good. Delete 42. Almost did it. Okay, go to the next one. That's a terrible image. I'm not sure what happened in this time frame, but it really messed up some of my images. I'm going to take them, all the bad ones out. Okay, now we're okay. It did move, but it, these images don't look bad. Now I am zoomed way in here. That one I might want to take out. 55. I am zoomed way in here, so... Okay. Now I'll do this again one time, just to see. Meridian flip. That's much better. Got rid of the bad images. So now what do you do? You got all these files you took out your bad images. I have to bring that up. Copy selected files to new location. Alright, so if I go up here... And then go down here, hit shift. Notice it highlights them all. Then you could copy selected files to new location. This will be your starting pictures. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to master work folder. I'm going to make a new folder called the video bubble. Oops. Return, and I'm going to select that folder, and it's going to save all those folders, or all those files that have been blinked into that folder, and that'll be my starting location. I like blink. It's a quick review of getting rid of pictures that you know might cause a problem and ruin your final picture. So now that's done. I'll click close. I don't need blink anymore. Now remember I said those files were not debayered. 
So let's go to all processes to Bayer and make them color. Clear that out of there. Clear. All right. So now I want to. My camera is RGGB. I'm not going to go over the settings too much. I'll leave these up there so you can see them. My camera is RGGB. Most cameras are, and obviously there's exceptions. Um, I leave everything else. We'll go into the that in a second. But let's add the files. So I want to go up to Video Bubble. There's all the files that I've linked. I'm going to select them all, open it, and then I'm going to select my destination folder. I'm going to go to Video Bubble, make a new folder, call it the Bayard. Select that folder, and there you go. It's all going to automatically put them in when it's down. You know, these are the Bayard pictures when you're done because it'll have the underscore D after the file name. All right, so I'm going to hit Apply Global. It'll start running. I'm going to pause the video because it'll take a few minutes, and then I'll start it back up. Okay, that process finished. You can see over here, 67 images succeeded. So that we're done with. So I'm going to close that. The next thing I'm going to go to script. Now a lot of people don't like weighted batch processing. It is not the most um, efficient way to do pictures. It's not the best way. It's a good way. I like it for a fast. I want to see what I did last night. See how it's going to turn out. This works really well. Uh, some of the PixInsight experts are going to frown when I say that, but you know what? I like it. It works, and you'll see the final image. It's not. It's going to be nice. Um, I usually use darks. I'm not going to do that here. Um, ZDBO camera. I don't really need bias. I keep my optics clean. I very rarely do flats. Yes, I should, and I probably will start, but I do do darks normally. I'm not going to do them here for the sake of uh, expedience. Um, so here we go. Now, I I uh, dither all my videos, if you don't, all my pictures. If you don't know what dither is, take a couple seconds and look it up. But basically, it just moves the picture around a little bit. So in case you have hot pixels or something like that, it actually cleans your pictures up quite a bit. Um, and then I drizzle the data here. Drizzle something that was invented by NASA for the Hubble. It, moves pixels around a little bit, smooths the, the image out quite a bit. I love it. Um, it works better if you dither and then drizzle, but you can drizzle without dithering. If you have regular pictures, you can try it. It, it will probably improve them a little bit. Um, works better if you're able to guide and dither while you're guiding. So I'm going to Add light files. I have to go to the right folder. There's my video bubble. Now I'm going to go into Debayer. Now you see it's got the D in there, so I know I'm working with the right files. That's the Debayer images. I'm going to open all those. Okay, so that's all good to go. Now this is going to probably be the longest process, so I'll go ahead and run it. It's going to give me an error saying, hey, you don't have bias, you don't have darks, you don't have flats. I know that. So I'm going to hit OK. OK. Why is it not working? There it goes. No. OK. What's it saying at the end here? Okay, let me pause this for a second. I'm going to have to edit this out. I don't know why this isn't working. Let, oh, I know why. Because I'm stupid. You have to pick the... This is a good example of how frustrating this can be sometimes. New folder. I'm going to call this...
call this WBP weighted batch processing select folder see if that solves the problem continue <laughs> okay so that's a good example of making sure you select your destination file I'm going to pause this okay so that all finished took about 10 minutes maybe a little bit more uh, but everything worked uh, did not register one image uh, image 53 that was around that time frame where there was bad images I might have missed one I'm not too worried about that that's probably a good thing if it automatically just gets rid of it um, okay so we're going to hit done I don't need this anymore I'm off finisher it's going to say are you sure yes now the next step remember WBP created drizzled image uh, list of drizzled images so now I'm going to do a drizzle integration so what this is going to do I'm going to add files now this is kind of tricky um, it makes these files automatically you kind of have to back up go to the WBP click on registered click on light and there they are and you know that the drizzle files because DRZ you can see they've been debayered registered and drizzled that's what I want so I'm going to select all those um, I click enable see if a drizzle and of course it's RGB you could leave that on automatic but I know it's RGB RGGB so I'm gonna leave it there uh, that's all pretty much the default settings for this it, it's very simple um, hit global and um, to let that run this will probably take about five minutes it should be quite as bad but I'm gonna pause it so I don't waste your okay so that finished now uh, this is just the weights file don't need that get rid of that okay now you're looking at this and saying what did you do that's a blank file there's nothing there <laughs> okay this has not been stretched so I'm going to go into pro all processes screen transfer function and bring that up out of the way bring that over here you click on that image and then you hit the little nuclear button here, the radioactive button, which is the stretch button. Boom. Okay, now you're looking at this and you're saying, well, this guy's an idiot. Look at how green that is. I know I said I was colorblind. Well, this is normal. Remember I said the format was RGGB, which is red, green, green, blue. So you have twice as much green in your image when you debayer it. So now what do I do? I got all these, this nice image in here. I can't see anything. It's green. Well, I'm done with drizzle integration. Integration. I'm closing that. Then I'm going to go to processes, all processes, dynamic background extraction. Now when I do that, when I click on the image, I get little crosshairs. Make sure you got the crosshairs, or else. You're not going to be doing what you think you're doing. So you bring, you look at this thing real quick. One of the things you got to do, I want to take away the excess green. I do that by hitting subtraction. Now, what I want to do is I want to select a bunch of different points on this picture for it to use as a sample. Now, um, I don't want to use I don't want to subtract any area that I think there's going to be neb a nebula in it. You're going to ruin your image. So you go around mainly the edges and you click and you make sure there's no dark spots in here which would be stars. I do that about 20 times. That's a good one. 
Good one. Good. We want to do it in different parts of the screen. Um, I'm going to avoid... Now this is where, if I use darks, this is amp glow down in this corner from the camera. But that's okay. I'll show you why in, towards the end here. But um, I'm not concerned about that. I do not want to click on it because it will affect the background extraction. So just keep clicking on And you notice I'm leaving little red spots here. Hopefully you can see it. When you move the crosshairs and click, it leaves a red spot. Now if I click on a star, that's what a star looks like. You do not want to leave that there. So you can just move the crosshairs over it and slide it into an area where there's no star. So I'm going to do a few more of those. There's a star in there. That's not too bad, but I'm going to move it anyway. Um, down here. Move that a little bit. Okay. Uh, how about right there? Okay. There. Like I said, you want to use different parts of the screen as much as you can. Just a couple more here. Can't leave that there. Okay. And we'll do one more. Hard to find a spot without stars. There we go. That should be good. Now I got those selected. I know there's no stars in it. I'm not in the neb. Oh, this is pretty close. I'm going to back this one out a little bit. Might be a little too close to the nebula. Uh, there we go. All right. So we're good. Now you take this little sideways triangle. I guess it's not a sideways triangle, but you click on it and you drag it up into the picture. Now this shouldn't take long, so I'm just going to let this run. Didn't take long at all. Now. This is the background image it took out. Again, it's blank. Guess what? you got to do a stretch of it. Notice it's green. That's what it removed. The background that it removed was all the green. I don't want that. I'm going to close that. Now I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to stretch that. Boom. Now, notice it's not green anymore. <coughs> it looks much better. It looks pretty good already. I don't need the original file. I have to close this. Yes. Get rid of the original file. Okay. It's starting to look like something. But if you zoom in, kind of noisy. Now I'm going to get rid of some of that noise right now. And so you go up to Processes. All oh, Processes. Multiscale linear transform. It's a fancy word, a way of saying let's get rid of some of the uh, noise. Now I did this earlier. Let me reset the settings so I can start from scratch. First thing I'm going to do, four layers is okay. I only ever use three. Uh, you could use four. You can experiment with all these settings. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything. You can always revert back. You do want this set to luminance. That's what you're going to affect. Hit noise. The first two are pretty flexible. I find, and a lot of people will probably not like this setting, but this, I find this works good for me. Excuse me. <coughs> now, I'm going to call up a real-time preview. It's going to show what that image looks like with the changes that I'm doing it while I'm doing it. Now you might not be able to see too much uh, on the uh, recorded video, but that, that already helped. My one problem with real-time preview, and maybe somebody can ha tell me how to do this, you can't zoom in and out, which is unfortunate, because I would like to see what it looks like zoomed in. You just have to kind of take an overall view Okay, so the first one seems to have worked. The second one, noise reduction. I set this one to six, and again, you can play around. Three integrations. Did I do three on that one? Yeah. And you can see it's a little spinny thing here on the real time preview is saying I'm still working it. Be patient. Okay. Now that's changed. Again, I could see an improvement. I'm not sure if you can see it. 
You'll just have to take my word for it on that one. Now the third integration is where you can get in trouble. If you overdo this one, you're going to destroy your stars. You don't want to do that. So I leave that one at the defaults and wait till it's done. It's spinning, spinning. Okay. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. Now that's that's pretty much the noise reduction right there. That's about as good as I'm going to get it uh, at this level here. So I'm going to get rid of the preview. And I'm going to drag that little triangle again up there. Now this could take a couple seconds. I don't think it'll be too bad, so I'm going to leave it running. Okay, that wasn't bad at all. You can see how it, it did clean it up. You can especially you tell when I zoom in. It's not all that garbled mess anymore. And okay, so now this is all I'm going to do with Pix Insight. There's a lot of other things you can do in Pix Insight, but this is all I'm going to do. But I have to save the image in some place that I can work it. I'm going to save as. That's my old one. I'm just going to copy over top of it. Oh, I can't do that. I won't let me. Let's do bubble 2. Now it's going to give me all sorts of errors. It says, you know, if you save this in a TIFF format, you're going to lose some data. Well, yeah. Lightroom only works in TIFF. doesn't affect it that much. Go to 16-bit. Got one step. I cancel that. Something else I have to do here. This is not a permanently stretched image. This is only stretched through screen transfer function. I'll close that. I don't need it anymore. So to make this a permanently stretched image so it's workable, you have to go to histogram transformation. Now this is a strange process. I don't know why they set it up this way. But uh, you want to drag the screen transfer function, that triangle, onto this box. And you see how that moved? It now has the screen transfer function stretch data in the histogram. Now you have to remove it from your picture. So you go up here to reset screen transfer function and there's your original it's not stretched. Now you can take this triangle and slide it over there. Now you have a permanently stretched image. I'm not sure why Pix Insight set it up that way, but now I have one I can save. So we go through this process again. Make it bubble two. Or else Lightroom's gonna holler at me. I'll save that. Yep, it's TIFF, I know that. Okay. Export it. Alright. I'm going to close Pix Insight. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to open Lightroom. And I'm going to add the bubble two picture. Bubble two. I'm going to review that for import. And I'm going to add that photo. That was a previous work. Now here's where I'm going to get rid of. I would like to keep that in there. Eh, there is some nebulosity around the edges that I'm going to be chopping out. But I'm more focused on the uh, bubble anyway. So I'm going to zoom and crop to there. I'm going to save that. So that's what I'm going to work with. Now, this is where it gets very subjective. You can play with this over here. I've been doing this for a few months where I've gotten a pattern of doing things that I like. You could do things completely different. I'll show you how I do. First thing I do is I come down to texture. I like to hit the texture. See how, now I'm going to go to the extreme. See how it softens the image up. So I'll go back to zero and I'll move this over to where I kind of think that looks good. That's my first step. Then I'll go down to sharpening and do some adjustments down there. Now at this level it's not doing too much so that's okay. I'll just leave that there and we'll go up to clarity. Okay, That's doing quite a bit. Maybe a little bit over there. Alright, so 
so that's my initial adjustments. Now I'm going to go back up. I'm going to take some con adjust the contrast. So I move the contrast to the right. I don't. I want to get rid of the background, but I don't want to get rid of the nebulosity. So that's pretty good there. And then I go down. I want to get rid of more of it. I'm going to move the shadows to the right and the blacks to the right. Now here's where you could cut out nebulosity if you go too far. Okay, I've got some nice dustlings in there. I kind of like that. Alright, now back down here again. Hit the texture again. Okay, that's pretty good. Hit the clarity again. So now you move the clarity a little to the right or the left and it looks better. Too far. Too far to the right. I don't even like to look at where the dial is. I just look at the screen. I kind of like it right there. Um, go down to sharpening. I don't have too much effect, but I'll leave it right there. Now noise reduction. This is what really, in my book, cleans up the image a lot. You gotta kind of play with it, and you don't want to go too far, but you want to leave it right there. And I also zoom in during this process to see what it looks like up close. You see how it's kind of cleaning it up a little. Let's see here. Yeah, it's all personal preference at that point, and I like to turn the color noise rejection up a little bit because I think overall that helps. Alright, so then I'm going to go one more time to texture. And now I can back the texture up a little bit, and that looks better. Back to contrast. I don't think I'm going to do much with that. Go to blacks one last time. Right about there. And now I'm going to adjust the highlights and whites. You can see why I do that. You don't really lose too much. If it's, if with the highlights high, it blows out the bubble and the stars. So you want to back that down until you're not losing nebulosity right about there. And also the same thing with the whites. And the whites you can usually adjust a little further without losing nebulosity. And I kind of like the way that works because I like to see the right side of the bubble. And with it over where it was, right in there, it kind of blows it out. But if you back it out, it looks nice. I like that. Now here's where I run into problems. Check the contrast one more time. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm colorblind. So I'm not going to tell you what colors it looks like to me, although I will say it's reddish. <laughs> but this is where I get into trouble. And I usually have my wife come over and I say, how's that look? How's that look? But uh, I think it's too red, in my opinion, from what my eyes tell me. So I'm going to back the red down a little bit without making it just overly green. And then I'm going to take the green and maybe back that down a little bit. Play with that a little. Yeah, I might leave the. I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to leave the green there. Probably try adding some blue. That's better. I don't know. That looks pretty good to me color-wise. Um, I am certainly not the color expert, though, I'll tell you that much. You can also come down here and adjust these. Now, sometimes these work well, sometimes they don't. Hmm, that wasn't too bad. Maybe right about there. And shadows. Okay, I'm not going to go there. Those are pretty much where I like them. Highlights. Right about there. One more time with noise reduction. Hit the clarity first. And this is where now all of a sudden clarity has a bigger effect after you do all those adjustments. And again, personal preference. Sharpening. Kind of has a neat ring to it too. And then one last adjustment of noise reduction. Alright, so you get the idea. Hopefully you think 
now color wise yeah <laughs> I don't know what the colors look like but you see how even a quick working through PixInsight and Lightroom will give you a, a pretty cool looking picture um, probably too much red in there one thing you want to watch remember I told you about the setting the one setting the level 4 or level 3 too high see how these stars don't have a halo if you there's a little bit of one there but if you go too high on that the stars will have this ridiculous look about them and also I think it's clarity will do that too there you go if I back clarity out all the way through that ugly halo now I just messed up my picture so we'll back out there So I hope that helped. Um, if you follow those steps with your pictures, obviously bad data in, bad data out. If you have half decent pictures, it should work pretty well. And uh, that whole setup that I ran through is what I do on most of my pictures. Obviously I take a little more time in Lightroom to adjust the colors and stuff, but um, I don't want to sit here and waste too much of your time to get the idea. Everything's over here. Um, play with them, move them around. Um, it's kind of fun to do. I wish I could see the colors. But uh, that's it. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. Um, help me expand. If you have any comments, feel free to leave it in the comments. Something you think I could do better. Something you think I did pretty good that you never thought of before. That would be fine too. Like I said, I'm by no means a Pix Insight expert. I am an amateur at it. Um, I have been playing with it for a couple months now. I'm getting better. But I kind of like this procedure that I just ran through. It's what I do for most of my uh, pictures. 